In this exercise, we'll be learning how to create div tags and manage them using cascading style sheets. I have a finished version here, which is what we're going to uh, work towards starting with a new file in a minute. But let me just uh, show you the HTML here as you can see it. I've basically got five div tags and all of the properties are being dictated through the uh, cascading style sheet. And they are using ID tags, ID properties rather, for each one. So I've named one red, one green, one blue, one yellow, and one purple. And again, this is all uh, linking to the cascading style sheet, which we will create once we start our new page. I also added a footer in here, and I just gave it a background of green through my styles as well, just so you can see it, to show you what uh, happens when we leverage the float and the clear properties, which is how we will manage these four boxes in the background here. And this purple box in here, we will use what's called an absolute position property. So let's start a new file. And I'll just go here and go new. HTML. And I'll just call this div exercise. And click create. Now I'll save the file right away. And speaking of saving the file, this is on the presumption that you will have set up a new site having created a directory on your desktop perhaps for the root folder and inside of there create another directory or folder called CSS which is where we will save our CSS files. The HTML files will just be saved directly into the root. So I'm going to save this right away. Save as and again if I'm not sure I should click site root Okay, so I am in the root, and I'll just call this div underscore exercise dot html, and click save. So my file now exists, it's saved, and you do need to save it before you apply any CSS. Really, you should save it right away before you create any content. So you can see the basic architecture here. It's a blank page, but it does have the HTML tags, and the head tags, and the body tags, as well as titles. So let's start by creating a div tag. We can create the div tag either by the insert pull down menu as you can see here or the insert tab and they're really a mirror of one an another. So either way it's going to work. So if I click div right here it will pop open a dialog box. I will use at insertion point but I do want to go in and dictate how it looks and where it sits on the screen using CSS. So I'm going to click the new CSS rule button right here, which opens another dialog box. And I want all of these div tags to have uh, unique IDs. And that's what I'll attach the uh, styles to. So I'm going to go up here and choose ID. Then type in the name. So the first one I'll call red. And I want to create those in a new CSS style sheet. So I'm going to click down here. I don't want it to be internal, so I'll go new style sheet. If one already existed, it would appear in this list as well. So new style sheet, and then I click OK. And it's going to ask me, where do you want to save that style sheet? I do want to put them in the CSS folder. And I'll call this one div underscore exercise dot CSS and click Save and this pops up uh, sort of a unique dialog box where I can actually manage all of the uh, CSS properties and their values within this box which has categories and then the various properties associated with those categories so I will work with this I'll go into the box category and I'll make my div tag 100 pixels wide by 100 pixels high and I'm going to give it a background color so I'll go over to background and I'll just go to the color picker and I had previously created colors you can just go in here and click the plus sign but I'll use the ones I've already created and I'll click on red and you just have to hit your return or enter key to put that in and I can click OK or apply actually OK for the first uh, iteration and I can always edit it through the CSS designer, which is something I will do on this one. So I click OK, and then click OK again, and there it is. Now I can go in here, I'm in the live view, 
split live view and I'll keep it in there now to edit text in live view I can double click in the box and then highlight that text and I'm just gonna actually delete it there and I can click away now I can click on that box again to highlight it and I'm just gonna show you in CSS I'll highlight my style sheet it created that ID you can see with the hashtag it's ID red if I click on there and I just click show set you can see all the properties that were done with that dialog box initially now I can go in here and change anything I want add delete uh, change values and so on I can click off show set and I have access to all the potential properties but show set shows me what is currently applied so we'll leave that and I'll do a save now actually speaking of that if you look at the top I now have a tab for my CSS style sheet and you can see what we have so far I can also see that there's an asterisk next to it and an asterisk next to the file name which means none of this has been saved yet so to save them all at once we go file save all there we go so now my style sheet is saved as I can see here and my source code and my initial file is also saved so I'll proceed to create a couple more so I can either click on screen or I can click in here I'm gonna click inside my code view and insert right after that div tag and create a new div tag on this one I guess I'll go to the pull down menu div it gives me the exact same dialog box I will say add insertion point but I will create a new rule so that I can also apply size and color to this one so new CSS rule go to ID this one I'll call green hit my tab key and I want to throw it inside of that div exercise.css file. Then click OK. And then I get the dialog box to actually apply styles. So I'm going to go to the background. I'll choose the green that I'd already cr created. Hit my return key. Then go to the box category and just establish a width and a height. OK. And that's good for now. And I'll click OK and click OK. And there's the second one again I'm gonna double click in here and get rid of that placeholder text I suppose I could also have gotten rid of it inside of my code view of course but each time I do one of these I'm gonna go save all so I've got two div tags right now one here and one here so again I'll go in my code view put my insert point after that last one and we'll create another one I guess I can try my insert menu over here div add insertion point new rule ID this one I'll call blue hit my tab key to enter that and make sure it's going into the div exercise.css file click OK and once again add a background color I'll just click blue and then go to my box category and establish a width and height of hundred pixels each click OK and OK and there's my third box and this one I'll just delete that text inside of my code view and I'll get rid of these actually non-breaking spaces as well I do not I don't need those it's you can't really see it but it doesn't need to be there in the code and I'll just do a save all again save all okay so I'm gonna create one more here maybe I'll just lower this a bit so I can see everything so again I'll just put my insert point after that last div tag and insert div add insertion point new CSS rule ID and this one I'll call yellow okay and I'll just make sure I spell that correctly make sure it's also going into that external file click OK and apply a couple of rules background I can actually double click this I think I'm just hitting my enter key to close that window though and my box once again a hundred by let me just tab over there to by a hundred okay and click OK and OK and in my code view I will get rid of that placeholder text which I do not need and save all <clears throat> now here's where I want to work with what are called the floats and the clears basically when you create a float it 
it literally floats above the content. So any content sort of in this order, like red is on the top, green is second from the top, blue is third, and yellow is fourth. If I float the red box, it means it's sitting in basically in an invisible layer on top of the other content. So whatever's underneath will sort of move up in the stacking order in the view. So it'll this will kind of be ignored and the green will actually move behind and the blue will move up a space and the yellow will move up a space. That's what I predict will happen when I apply a float left to this red. So I'm going to highlight the red box and go to my CSS designer and you can see that it's also highlighted here. And I'm just going to undo the show set and go to my layouts here and I'm just going to go down a little bit down here and you can see we have float here. What we have is float left, float right, and float none. And if I ever want to change it, once I apply it, I could see a little garbage can over here. So I'm going to go float left, which again will put it on invisible layer above everything else, which means anything underneath will kind of move up the food chain up the page. Here I go, float left. And as predicted, the green box is actually underneath the red right now. In fact, what's really happening is the red is on top of everything else. So I'm going to do that to all four, and ultimately that means if I go float left, they will gang up sort of to the right where the float will be on the left. So I'm just going to go and highlight each one of these selectors. So the ID called green, I'm going to float that left, and it pushes it up there, and the blue moved up, and the yellow moved up, and the blue is currently behind the red. So let's just go down to the blue and we'll float that to the left as well. And now the yellow is hidden behind the red, so I'll highlight the yellow and I'll float that to the left as well. Now just for a temporary example, I'm gonna float it to the right so you can see what happens. And you see it floats and sticks to the far right. So I could click float right on all of these and they would all move over to this side of the page. Let me switch that back to float left. And now they are all floating, so the actual page content, if there was any, would be underneath these four red boxes. So that brings me to this next property called clear. Let's say I wanted to maybe push these bo two boxes down, the blue and the yellow. There's a feature called clear. And we can clear left, clear right, and clear both. What clear means is if I say clear left, it will not allow something to float to the left. In other words, it's going to move it down so that it's the most left thing on the page. And if there's something in the way that's already floated left, it will move down on the page. So if I wanted to move this box and this box, I could simply f clear the blue box. So let's go up to blue. And going to clear, I'm going to go clear left. Boom. Because this one doesn't have a clear, it's going to float with the float left which is right here because the float is still set on the blue box that's why they're all kind of sitting theoretically above everything else now if I wanted to move the yellow box down below then I could clear the left on the yellow so let's just try that and then I'm going to put it back yellow clear left and you see what happens there it's clear left means it will not allow anything floating to the left of it anymore now I can undo that by hitting the little garbage can here so I should do a save all right now. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to actually add a footer here. I'm just going to put my insert key after the yellow div tag. And I'll go back to my insert here. And we'll just drop in a footer, footer tag. I'll say add insertion point, And I won't apply a rule to it yet. I will a little bit later, but let me just put it in without any rules applied. Because now you can see, actually, I will put a green background in it. So I'm take that back. I'm going to go to my CSS designer. With it selected, I can go add selector. And I'm just going to take this and make it basically apply to the footer. Hit my enter key. And I'm just going to put a background color in it just to demonstrate. So I'll just choose a background color, let's say uh, an orange here. Okay, hit my enter key, and there you have it. The reason I put a background color in there was to show that this is content on the page going behind my floated div tags here. So these are floating above this content. All right. Uh, eventually, I'm going to 
show you how we can move this down below everything again, but we're going to leave it up there for now. And I want to jump to one more div tag. So I'm going to put my insert after the yellow div tag and insert one more div tag. This one I will create a new rule and I will set the ID and we'll call it purple. Okay. And yes, make sure it's going into that external style sheet. And I'll just give it a background of purple, which I already have here. Enter, and we'll set the box size once again, 100 by 100. Click OK. And OK. Now it's hidden, but it's actually pushing that content. So I will actually uh, go into that ID right now. I can highlight it here and go to my CSS designer and we'll go to the highlight the purple I think I can drag these around yes I can I'll highlight the purple and I'm going to actually make this what's called an absolute position which is going to lock it into a certain spot on the page so under the layout I'm going to go down to position here and if I click right in here we have what's called absolute and that does float it as well now you can see it on top of the red box and I can go into left top right so I'm just gonna work from the left and the top which will push it out from the left and the top I can click in here I'm gonna choose pixels in this case but I could have used percentages or M's and I'm just gonna click and drag that and you can see how I can actually move that organically by dragging on that number and I'm gonna push it down from the top I'll pick pixels here as well and then click over that number with the double arrow and push it down now I'm just going to go into my code view and get rid of that placeholder text there we go and I can click on the screen and save all so that's what's called absolute position I can click on it again and I can always edit that under position here or I can reset it by just click clicking on the garbage can I can actually remove the property so let's say I want to move it a little more to the right I just drag those numbers and now if I want to type it in if I want it to be exactly let's say uh, 200 pixels from the left there we go okay and I can click in here to kind of deselect now that footer once again it's riding behind it so I'm going to apply a clear tag to it and I'm gonna say clear both even though clear left would do it in this case um, Clear both means that it will actually not allow any content on the left or the right. And that means that the consequence of that is that it will move below everything because it can't have anything on the left. So the only place it can go where nothing is on the left is down here in this area. So let's highlight the footer. And we'll go down here and look for the clear. And here's the clear both. And I click that, and as predicted, it moves down until there's nothing to the left. In this case, clear both would mean nothing to the left or the right. But on our page, everything is floating to the left. And that's our exercise on how to apply create div tags and work with the float and the clear properties to establish it on the page, if you will, as far as the location is concerned.